So we pray, Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this expectant company of people who come here, Lord, to hear your word, and they shall not leave here disappointed, Lord, if you come forth and help us to present the word which has been vindicated in such a way that we all may be humbled and learn of you, Lord, knowing that you're meek and lowly in heart, and you had the yoke of God upon you, laboring together, Lord, and we could just have your yoke upon us, the fulfilling of your word, all pulling together, Lord, going to that glorious destination that Brother Branham spoke of. What a marvelous thing it will be, Lord, even as it was said by someone <clears throat> so truthfully, we have, a, we have a little glory to go to glory in, and that is marvelously true. We pray we may love you as never before, loving your word, loving each other, uh, serving you as never before, serving each other through that word, Heavenly Father, knowing that all things are bound up in there, Lord. And one day we, by your grace, Lord, we shall be in the one spirit as your prophet was with you. And all these things coming forth in our hearts, minds, and lives, just really rejoicing in the truth, knowing it's word, 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 word piled on word, foundation right to the very top to the capstone, the word himself. All these things, Lord, we know are ours tonight. Help us in humility to see them fulfilled. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, before we go into message number three, and we never know just how far we're going to get, um, sometimes when I go back over things that I've said, I realize I've said them in such a way that uh, maybe you don't get what I'm saying or it looks like an overstatement. And uh, I uh, realize that because I talk rapidly, I think rapidly, and um, I, I don't think rapidly enough to keep up with my speech. I should slow myself down to think more clearly, <clears throat> to place every word as it ought to be. And uh, the other night I, I knew right away that I was going to be, could be well misunderstood, and especially people getting a tape they would be highly critical of what I said. And so I want to go back over it so you'll know that, uh, well, they won't even bother to hear the next tape. They'll just figure, out, you know, I've really gone down the drain with what I said. You remember the last time I had read out of uh, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. Now that's going to be Revelation uh, chapter 5 and 1 and also from Daniel, uh, from whose faith the earth and the heavens fled away and there is found no place. And I said, hogwash. You, what I was not saying hogwash or nonsense to the word of God, I definitely said then and I say now that this is not a correct translation of the original. Because if you're going to say the heavens and earth fled away, there is found no place, it means they're out there circling in space and they're out there somewhere and waiting to be located. That is not true. There's no way you can believe that. See, now what you're looking at is, number one, the word fled means to run away or to flee, <clears throat> or even by implication to shun. So, all right, the word place means a spot, meaning in space, a spot in space but limited by occupancy. So, what you're seeing here is very simple. The earth cannot, or the heavens even, be a place of habitation any longer. So therefore, standing at the white throne before the face of him with whom we have to do, proving, uh, having been proved to us at this very point that white throne is on, from Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the twelfth verse, where Brother Branham discerned, you, you could five million people you couldn't hide, for five billion you couldn't hide. There's no way proving this to be the truth, you see? <clears throat> so therefore, there was no place to hide. There was no place to go. And then notice John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth are passed away. There's no more sea. And I saw the holy city coming down. But you go to Peter, which Brother Branham backed 100%, you'll find the earth was dissolved. And that's what you're looking at here, to fled away is not a correct understanding. You have to, you, so when I said what I said, I stand by what I said. This 
cannot be taken the way it sounds, just fled away in no place, just zooming out there in space somewhere. It just tells you flat. Remember, he'll destroy those that destroy the earth. The bride cannot live, and those that are in the second resurrection cannot live in such a place desecrated by man. Now, the earth is purged by fire before the saints come back. We, that's true, as there was water that came. Now there's fire, but at the end time, after the white throne, and remember all this sin and all this the degradation is all dredged up and shown there, he said, all right, God takes his people somewhere. Brother Branham mentioned that, but he didn't say where. I, I say caught up to his throne and just leave it there <clears throat> in his divine providence. <clears throat> then the earth literally turns like to a steam back to original molecules, and God brings it forth in this tremendous resurrection. So I want you to know that. People will hear the tape on Sunday, and they'll, they'll say, well, there it is. He finally blew his lid, and, and that's what you're looking at. See, you're not looking at that at all, because the translation here, if it was gone back to the original and carefully looked at, you will find here it, it, it absolutely, the future is gone as far as what that in its present condition is. Now, we can see then the renewing, and you can see it falls into Scripture. <clears throat> also, I did not lead you astray by my what I said in, in, the, in the book of, of Revelation, the 19th chapter, when I mentioned there, I saw heaven open, behold, a white horse, and uh, he that sat upon is faithful and true. And you notice right off the bat, it mentions the white horse before it mentions who is on him. And Brother Branham categorically said the beast signifies power. And what you're looking at is power here. And so the, the, what the, the great issue in this present hour is who came down here to put all things under the feet of the Son and is still being done until one day the kingdom is handed back to the Father. So, <clears throat> and if you want to see that even more clearly, uh, you go back with me to the book of Daniel where I took you uh, to the seventh chapter. Uh, I hope you're following me because this is not difficult once you, once you follow Scripture. In 7 and 13 to 14, I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man, one like to a Son of Man, exactly what you see in the book of Revelation, came with clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom shall not be destroyed. That's exactly true. And at, after the great white throne and the dissolving of earth and bringing it all back and the pyramidal city of New Jerusalem, 1,500 miles each way, comes down, what is it? The bride is there and the Lamb has his eternal kingdom. But remember now, the pillar of fire is above him. They, in other words, it's all been handed back to the Father because Brother Branham said, and before they call, he answers. <clears throat> so these things, many times, as I say, uh, I don't make them clear. I've made them clear other times. You might even forget what I said, but it's right there in 1 Corinthians 15. The one that's here now is putting the church in an order and bringing everything under the feet of Jesus, and he'll be reigning for the millennium, <clears throat> and then uh, the kingdom will be his. And he's fully identified with us, but at the same time identified with God as an only begotten son. So, all right, another statement I made and this one goes back and forth and back and forth. Brother Branham did the same thing. Everybody does the same thing. And sometimes you say, uh, how, can you, how can you say that you believe if you don't understand because then you don't believe? And yet, the truth of the matter is, believing is not understanding to begin with because you really don't know what you're believing. Here's what you're looking at. If you want to get the picture 100% perfect, and I know you do. <clears throat> you go to the book of John, the 14th chapter that Brother Branham uses, but he doesn't use that scripture that we're, that tonight as we read it. And in, verse, in the 14th chapter, it distinctly says, beginning in verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, the Father in me? The words that I speak, and I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Now here's a union <clears throat> that is almost absolutely unbelievable. This union and the depth of it. Then believe that I am in the Father, the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Now, you see, they never had an understanding. <clears throat> but he says right here, believe, and from your believing will come understanding. There's nobody can tell me that he truly believes, and he's going to sit there without having, taking anything 
uh, into his conscious understanding. Now, it may be <clears throat> that you're like the washerwoman, Brother Branham said, uh, two or three tapes is all she needed. He saw some people fill up slow, some people fill up fast. Again, he said there's Christians in the order of Lot, like being a, a nickel and a dime a dozen, and Abraham being the silver dollar. <clears throat> there's things in there that you have to understand, and sometimes I, I skip over them, but if I catch them on a tape, I find, well, hey, I don't know that the people are really getting what I'm saying. They, they, I might confound them. <clears throat> I may cause them a bit of trouble. Now, the other night also caused my wife a bit of trouble. I mentioned in there that, that uh, we have a wonderful marriage, but it's been strained a little while at times because uh, of her mind. Now, that sounds, I should have said her memory instead of her mind. She's, she's losing her marbles or going bananas. No, she isn't at all. <clears throat> she's worried about many times forgetting, and yet she forgets that when she had her problem with her jaw, well, it, wasn't, it was a problem. She has an ache in there that's undefinable. It comes and nobody knows the answer. And so when it came to time for implants, it could make it worse if an operation was there and a disturbing nerve. We went to, we went to the best neurologist in Columbus. He's the head of the university. And so, well, he said, Mrs. Bale, let's make some checks here. And he checked her out and clunked her here and clunked her there. And, the, and he gave her a memory test because she was complaining about her forgetfulness and all. And she, she got a perfect record. And he said, listen, you're way above many people far below your age. And, and I'll tell you the, the truth of the matter. I went to see a neurologist because I had to, because nobody knew what's going on in my body. And he's the best man in Cincinnati, Cincinnati U. And he asked me who the present president was. It was Reagan. And you know I drew a mental block. I couldn't say Reagan. <laughs> so now here she, she's complaining. Anybody gets a mental block. <clears throat> so she, she worried about the fact that she'll be looking at something yellow and call it green. And so last night I got to thinking, maybe two this morning, I just shook the whole bed, laughing to myself. And I said, well, you know, that's, that's nice. That's really scriptural. Because it says Abraham's faith in a God who called those things which are not as though they were. So <clears throat> that's making a joke that isn't nice. I know it's too silly. But I want you to know that there's nothing wrong with Alice in any way, shape, or form. She's not lost one marble <clears throat> at all. But she has a little problem with the block. And I have the same problem. There are days when I go with trying to recall a word or a person, and I won't ask. I'll just wait and wait and wait. Um, you know, and uh, uh, that's, that's the way it is. You, you just got to remember when I said that now, and don't anybody think that for one minute that my wife has gone into some kind of a problem. It's just part of, a <clears throat> part of life, and uh, it's one of those things that aren't so nice. Okay. Let's go as quick as we can into this message here. Now, this is number three of things that are to be. Again, we make note that before Brother Branham actually begins to bring the message of the evening, he casually, actually, in a veiled manner, reveals that he is a judgment prophet. This is the same man who said, if you pronounce or preach judgment, you better know what you're saying and where you're coming from. In other words, you had better be vindicated so you know it is actually from God, <clears throat> especially for the season. Now remember, last Sunday we showed you the role of judge. Even God, the righteous judge of all the earth in Genesis 18. Now that's before the destruction by fire, Sodom and Gomorrah. We're in a Sodom condition today. But notice further that God did not become judge at that point. <clears throat> in other words... <clears throat> he didn't become judge at that point. There was a point previous to it. And that was way, way back, possibly, I don't know, thousands of years back. But even in the Garden of Eden, <clears throat> he was judge in Genesis 3. Right. He, he, he stuck, he went right down with his word and passed a sentence according to the word and what was actually in that word. <clears throat> now, Remember that God is not only judge, he is also executioner. Remember the king that came and said, cut those people to pieces? <clears throat> he passed the sentence and caused the sentence to be <clears throat> carried out upon them. Now, he was judge in Genesis 6 in the days of Noah. And in Genesis 15 and 14, he speaks of Israel being in Egypt for 400 years and said, I will judge the Egyptians. 
who went down with Moses. Judge Elohim. <coughs> Judge Jehovah Elohim, right? So let's get some understanding under our <coughs> thinking caps. It was an, and when he went down to the Egyptians, it was another case of right hand and left hand. <coughs> he brought Israel out with a strong right arm, completely exonerating them. Mm -hmm. Through the blood that scattered sin until there was no evidence. And you could not impeach them nor impale them. You know, the word impeach and impale are two different words. I wouldn't mind being impeached if they couldn't impale me. <laughs> they can do something about it. It's a pretty rugged situation. <clears throat> so he went down with both hands. In the right hand was the blessing. And remember again, Jesus is also known as the right hand of God or the power and might of God. And he went down with the left hand, and in the left hand there was death to the firstborn of the world, life to the firstborn of his chosen. <clears throat> and the great plague of death in this hour also is here in the left hand, According to 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter, 7 to 10, and in the 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, the second death, the plague. And you know what the second death is? <clears throat> Lake of fire. And you try to tell me why the throne isn't here? The time hasn't gone into eternity. They were not standing right here with time and eternity completely blending. You can't tell one from the other. Well, can you? Can you pick your soul out and show it to me? Tell me something about it. <clears throat> Not with a microscope. In all seven ages of the Gentiles, that's the Gentile church ages, he judged each age. age. He con and when you see they wouldn't listen, he condemned it, laid away his messenger and his bride, <clears throat> and condemned that age. <clears throat> then sent a new message with a new messenger. <clears throat> now, finally today, we are in the last age, and the judge has come down. And here we find some truths in Scripture, and we looked at them. We're reviewing them now in the sixth chapter of the book of Revelation and 12 and 17 verses. And I beheld when he'd opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? <clears throat> See, in the 8th chapter, and, uh, oh, we read a few verses here. Uh, when I opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, and he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. That's, you remember, the Bible says to Moses, See, thou make all things according to the pattern I showed thee in the mount. <clears throat> and the heavenly pattern up here was cleansed by blood also, like down here. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast in the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and earthquake. And the seven angels were, which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sound, there followed hail and, fi and fire mingled with blood. And they were, they were cast upon the earth. The third part of the trees were burnt up and the green grass was burnt up. You talk about a forest fire. <clears throat> talk about hundreds of thousands of acres burning. We're talking the millions, I guess, aren't we? The second angel sounded as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast in the sea. And a third part of the sea became blood. What do you think that was? And there was some big meteor or something run out of course up there and come down. Uh, now burning up. The third part of the creatures were in the sea and had, had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third, you, my, that's, that's a tremendous thing. The angel sounded, you the great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. It fell upon the third part of the rivers, and the foundation of the waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. The third part of the waters became Wormwood, <coughs> Wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And you know, listen, you know something? There's a lot of that's going on right now. Pollution. There's the, I just read in the papers, it was kind of as a joke, but it wasn't meant to be a joke. Uh, this woman 
is down there around in, what, a Metamoros or something down in, the, uh, in Mexico, getting in the border down south there, maybe where, where it joins, what is it, Guatemala or someplace. <clears throat> and there are three canals come together where all the pollution is being poured in from the chemical factories. And she said, we don't worry about our dogs having fleas. She said, we just dip them in the canal, and they come out with every flea dead. She said, of course, all their hair falls out, too. <laughs> but it grows again. You know, that's a very sarcastic and bitter, ironic, but beautiful statement. We're not going to survive the pollutions here, brother, sister. Come on. We've got to get out of here. <clears throat> See? So, all right. And the fourth angel sound, the third part of the sun was smitten, the third part of the moon, the third part of the stars. And, 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 uh, and notice what it says. Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voice, the trumpet of the three angels yet to sound. You see, judgment is, is being put out there. In the ninth chapter, we won't go through it. And in the 16th chapter, you got a lot there. We'll just skip through quickly to... <clears throat> and if you want the verses there, uh, 9... Uh, verses 1 to 20, Revelation 16, 1 to 21, Revelation 18, uh, 4 to 8. We can look at that because that's an easier one. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. Now, who's saying that? The judge is saying that. <clears throat> Who else can say it but a judge? See, this is exactly why Brother Branham had a gift of discernment. It means to judge between. To really know right from wrong. Righteousness from unrighteousness, right down the line. Okay. <clears throat> For her sins are breached unto heaven. That, there you are. That's a verdict. And God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double under her double. What's that to the fourth degree? Yeah. You bring it up to number four. Double is, is squared. And double would be to the fourth degree. So... Now, you're not talking about one here now. Because you could take one of the 16th, come back just one. <clears throat> <clears throat> you're talking about a payback. Whatever the first, whatever starts with is going to be double, double. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sore giver. Now, there's your root right there. You're going to start with the contrast of her delicious living. And at what she did for those around her, that's like, you rich men weep and howl. The miseries have come upon you. Your silver and your gold is cankered because you've held back the hire of the laborers. Now, don't tell me that's not going to come to pass. Those men sowed it. They're going to reap it. And they're going to reap in the measure of double what was there where they tricked these people to the fourth degree. God's mills may grind slow, but they grind fine. <clears throat> How much you give her sore and torment. For she said in her heart, I said, a widow, I said as a queen and no widow, I said, I'm, I'm the wife of God, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. Watch, for strong is the Lord who judges her. Judge. Huh? Ask you a question. Why aren't the preachers preaching judge? <clears throat> you say, well, Brother Vail, that makes you very smug. Well, didn't say I wasn't, but I don't know that I am. That's it for the 20th chapter, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. <clears throat> How the word says, it's not inhabitable anymore. Forget it. No longer, no longer exists as a habitation. <clears throat> See? That little spot that it has in the universe, and everybody, everybody knows, every astronomer, anybody studying any kind of a science, which I'm not a scientist, nor astronomer or anything else, you know this little earth here is a barely a pinpoint when compared to everything else. And the whole thing going in circles. <clears throat> like Brother Branham said, you'll find this one big circle. Science is beginning to believe that. Found no place. And I saw the dead, small, and great stand before God. Now the books are open. Ha ha, judgment. Another book opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged of those things written in the books according to their works. See, judged, 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 judged. And the sea gave up the dead were in it. And the death and hell drew up the dead in them. And they were judged, judged, judged. Every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever is not found written in the book of life is cast in the lake of fire. 
<coughs> Judas is there. Okay. In the 19th chapter, we won't read it because the same thing is there. This is the one coming. The spirit that's in our midst becomes incarnate to us, coming back in his marvelous, glorious power, <clears throat> exalting the Lord Jesus Christ and the bride as they're coming down there. And notice out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and what's written on his, his and, and, he, and he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. But what about this? He was clothed in the vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, and he's the King of kings and Lord of lords. <clears throat> And what's he doing? He's judged, and he calls all these things that come to pass. <clears throat> so, all right, we're up here where we can just start reading again. <clears throat> and um, Brother Branham said, I was talking to a very loyal friend of mine not long ago who was a Catholic. He said, God will judge the world by the Catholic Church. <clears throat> well, you know that's a lie. God can't judge the world by any church. You know, that's just like the... Years ago, we, we made a big mistake in the Baptist Church over there in uh, Spencerville, Ohio. Uh, we had a little Halloween party to keep the kids off the street, you know. I want say, come on, don't, don't bother writing on people's windows and doing little tricky, foolish things, you know. That's not right. You know, come on, we'll give you a real nice party, give you prizes, everything else. And so <clears throat> this one woman, she'd been coming to church, and we thought, well, we'll make her feel welcome. So we said, okay, you pick the one for the prize. So she picked her own kid, and the kid was maybe fourth rate or fifth rate. And, you know, that's a picture, right, we... <clears throat> <clears throat> like we're talking about here. Which church? Why, the church would judge everybody by themselves and say, come on, all you Methodists, come on in here. Yeah. Or all you Baptists, come in here. All you Catholics, come in here. You can't judge by any church. <clears throat> if so, he said, what Catholic church? And there's, there's different Catholic churches. Most people don't know that, but there are. If, if he judges by the Methodists, what about the Baptists? If he judges it by one, then the other's lost. There's too much confusion there. But we have to go to the Bible to find our true statement. The Bible says that God will judge the world by Jesus Christ, and he is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is with God, and the Word was God. The Word is made flesh and dwelt among us. And remember, it's a, it's a thing of the flesh that's being, that's being judged. The, the angels have already been judged in the measure. They've been kicked out of heaven. <clears throat> what they thought was about, Brother Brandon said, about a third fell. And uh, so they've been judged already, but you see their destination. Like the Bible says, art thou come to judge us before our time? That's not a matter of judging before the time when Jesus was on earth casting them out. That's the king exacting the penalty. They already were judged when they followed Lucifer. Because the Bible said hell was made for the devil and his angels. Then you've got to judge by the word. You've got to go to the word. What's it all about? What's it all about? <clears throat> so, all right. And Brother Branham knows the Bible is true because... God vindicated himself to him as the one that wrote the Bible, introduced all the prophets, then vindicated him to the people. Now he said, Hebrews 13 and 8, he seemed to ever say yesterday, day, and forever. And I believe that to be the truth. <clears throat> now, I believe that God in the beginning, being infinite God, he's the infinite one, and uh, we're the finite. His mind is so much greater, and we in our little finite minds cannot understand his great infinite wisdom. Now, that's a very broad statement because the word wisdom is going to include everything that is in God's mind concerning God's knowledge. And it's a complete compendium. There's nothing missing. There's no other thought can be added. Nothing can be taken away. <clears throat> now, that's a tremendous thing. Now, so we cannot understand his great infinite wisdom. But therefore, when he speaks anything, it may seem very strange to us to hear him say a certain thing in the Scripture, but it's got to happen. Now, Brother Branham, of course, is launching his sermon, Things That Are Will Be, <clears throat> or Things That Are To Be. So, when you go back to God, you must remember things are. See? Because he's what? The great I am. There's no past and future with God. Simply God, the eternal one. <clears throat> That's El Elohim, or El Ela, or Elohim. That's a strong one bound by an oath. Then later on, he calls himself Jehovah Elohim. Same person. It's a compound title. And within one title, the Jehovah complex is a compound of eight. 
Now, Brother Branham mentioned seven. So does everybody else. But there's an eighth one, and it's called the sanctifier, number eight. And number eight is the millennium, right? For the sanctification. Oh, we're really going to learn something then. I, I honestly tell you, there is my hope. Under the seven seals, and, and, and God coming down, giving the message to Brother Branham, <clears throat> you might not believe this, but, you, but you, you, you better believe it because it's the truth. I have greater consolation and rest and peace and hope in that one statement that Brother Branham made. Say, man, I'm going to beat this rap yet. Amen. Yep, I'm going to come to the place where I know I'm walking within the light as he is in the light, having fellowship one with another. You say, well, add the rest, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleansing. That's for this hour right here. Now, if that is given us <clears throat> by the confirmed promise of God in a judgment, you better believe the millennium is going to be a wonderful place where we really begin to grow up as you've never grown up before. I think we'll get started to get introduced to those mysteries that we, that we have no mind of because we bypass that, that spirit body or word body. <clears throat> now, he says, if he says a certain thing, no matter how strange, and Brother Branham is talking to a bunch of people he knows, a lot are Pentecostals. And they cannot stand the word predestination. So he uses the word foreknowledge. What is the difference if I said from now on, I'm going to call this pen, uh, what? Flashlight? Doesn't change it. It's still a pen. But if you love to be deceived, no problem. You talk about throwing a curve and them loving it. Huh? That's like dropping a frog in your soup and liking it. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Listen. You say, Brother Bill, where are their minds? Good question. You're not running in continuity the mind of God, I can tell you that. I mean, I'm not running them down. I'm just telling you the truth. <clears throat> you know it and I know it. He said, now, he said, I, now he said, he says certain things in Scripture, but it's got to happen. I believe that his words will never pass away. Therefore, I believe that God, knowing that we in our little finite minds could not interpret his great mind, he interprets his own word. <clears throat> he doesn't need any interpreter. <clears throat> now, of course, what he's telling you right there, that a man using his mind cannot adjust to God's word. There's no way he can get it by just the mental faculties. It won't work. See? He interprets, he therefore interprets his own word. He doesn't need any interpreter. <clears throat> he interprets his own word by vindicating that word in its season. Now, <clears throat> here is where you will find that Brother Branham differs from every person that you'll ever run across, as far as I know, in any works written by anyone of so-called stature in the realm of the study of the Word of God, call it theology or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> it seems that everybody gets stuck with a certain rhythm of a continuity that they feel, hey, one big lump here and it goes, all the way up to here until the entire lump has run out. They don't understand what started with a great big lump had a serious flaw. Wrong Jesus, wrong spirit, wrong word. <clears throat> and therefore the lump was already being diminished until in the fourth age, which stands in the middle, the furthest from the light, it was almost chaotic, utter darkness where God had to stand up and say, listen, I'm tired of you, and I'm telling you, woman, if you don't straighten up, you and your daughters are going to the lake of fire, period. And I'm going to end the whole bunch up in the great tribulation. <clears throat> that means every representative church. And they all came out of Rome. I, 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 listen, I got Time Magazine. I, maybe I can find it sometime, but I'll show you every single church came out of Rome. <clears throat> Everyone's a daughter. They're all going to be in the tribulation. They're all going to the lake of fire. <clears throat> Second death. See? Now, this business 
of God in his seasons. The Brother Brown spoke of spiritual <clears throat> uh, prude in, dear, dear, in due season. Now, I read this a long time ago to you. It's a weast, liberal, expanded translation of God's Word. Now, here's what Peter says. Concerning which salvation prophets conducted... <clears throat> Uh, I don't know if I got the right one for it. No, here we are. Start this side. <clears throat> Peter, an ambassador of Jesus Christ, to those who have settled down alongside of a pagan population, sown as seed through Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, chosen out ones. Here you are. Two vines growing right together. <clears throat> chosen out ones. This choice having been determined, that's a choice of you, not only as you as elect ones, but right where you are. See? Determined by the foreordination of God the Father, those chosen out to be recipients of the setting apart work of the Spirit, resulting in obedience of faith, and this resulting in the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, status sanctifying grace to you and tranquilizing peace be multiplied. Now there's a lot in there <clears throat> that this man interjects, hoping that you will get the exact truth of what is being said here. Now let's find out if Dr. Woos. Wist. Pete's Woost, isn't it? Let's see if he missed one trick. <clears throat> All right. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. And it talks about the end time. Satan in verse 9, second chapter, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish. That's the ones alongside of you. Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved, they couldn't. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Oh, you won't die. Oh, no, millions now living will never die. That the all might be damned. Aha, judge. That believe not the truth. Aha, judge. And had pleasure in unrighteousness of false worship. Now watch. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit, even belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, did Dr. Weeks make one little error? No. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay. We got this far, haven't we? Let the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be eulogized, praised, who impelled, oh my, who impelled by his abundant mercy, caused us to be born again so that we have a hope which is alive. This living hope having been made actual through the intermediate instrumentality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ out from among those who are dead, resulting in an inheritance imperishable and undefiled that does not fade away, which inheritance has been laid up and is now kept guarded in a safe deposit in heaven. For you who are constantly being kept guarded by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last season, which is epical and strategic in its significance. Now you tell me that doesn't make Brother Branham shine like a 10 billion watt bulb. Isn't he the one that talked about the season? <clears throat> Isn't he the one <clears throat> who called it a juncture? Strategic. God's his own strategist. Gave us a man to bring us in on the strategy. How to get out of here. <clears throat> in which, in which, in which last season you are to be constantly rejoicing. Now this is this season, last season, with a joy that expresses itself in a triumphant exuberance. Although for a little while. At the present time, if perchance there is need for it, you have been made sorrowful in the midst of many different kinds of testings in order that the approval of your faith, which faith was examined by testing for the purpose of being approved, that approval being much more precious than the approval of gold which perishes. Now, you see, you've got your passive and your active faith right in there. I said the other day, why should you act upon something you don't believe? And why should you not act upon something you do believe? <clears throat> Even though the gold be approved by fire testing, they be discovered after scrutiny to result in praise and glory and honor at the time of the revelation of Jesus Christ. The only time there's an absolute scrutiny is in this hour, and that's got to be in Hebrews 4 and 12. 
Now, you know what that is. <clears throat> Discerning. <laughs> may be discovered after scrutiny <clears throat> to result in the praise and honor, glory and honor at the time of the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom not having seen, you love because of his preciousness, in whom now not a seeing yet believing you are to be rejoicing with an inexpressible and glorified joy upon the occasion of your receiving the promised consummation of your faith, which is the final salvation of your soul. That's for this hour. <clears throat> now you turn that loose on the Pentecostal. They'll only shout and jump and scream if there's, you know, something going on different from this. Concerning which salvation prophets conducted an exhaustive inquiry, inquiry and search. Those who prophesied concerning the particular grace destined for you, destined, 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 predestined, right? Searching as to what season or character of season the Spirit of Christ who was in them was making plain when he was testifying beforehand concerning the sufferings of Christ and the glories which should come after these sufferings. <clears throat> so you got two tremendous revelations here, the suffering of Christ and the glorification concerning what us? To whom it was revealed that not for themselves were they ministering these things which now have been reported to you through those who have announced the glad tidings to you by the Holy Ghost who was sent down on a commission from heaven, which things angels have a passion and desire to soup way down and look into, like the cherubim above the mercy suit at gates at the sprink of blood and wonders mean. Now he just threw that in, but it's very nice. <clears throat> Wherefore, having put out of the way once for all everything that would impede the free action of your mind. How are you going to get that outside of getting the full word of God in your mind? Be calm and collected in spirit and set your hope perfectly holy and unchangeably without doubt and despondency upon the grace that is being brought to you upon the occasion of the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's this hour. As obedient children, not assuming an outward expression which does not come from your inner being. Hypocrite, see? and is not representative of it, an expression pattern after the expression which you formerly had in the ignorance of your past and desires. But after the pattern of the one who called you, the Holy One, you yourselves also become holy persons in every kind of behavior because it has been written as on record, be ye, you be holy individuals because as for myself, I am holy. <clears throat> now what did Brother Brown say? God, in Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 40, be perfect, he's your father in heaven is perfect. He said, if God made a command, he's got to make a way for it. Amen. Yes, sir. And he said, what? He said, how does a bride become perfected by the blood? <clears throat> he said, the blood of Jesus Christ scattered sin. Talk about the, the, the bleach of the blood of Christ. If you had the being of evidence, then how can you make a man a sinner? And in view of the fact that you call on, no, and in view of the fact that you call on as father, him who judges, not with a partiality based upon mere outward appearance, but with an impartiality in accordance to each individual work with a wholesome, serious caution or to your behavior during the time of your residence as a foreigner, a citizen of heaven living here on the earth, and so on. <clears throat> Knowing as you do that not by means of perishable things such as silver and gold and so on, <clears throat> you're made free. <clears throat> now you can see in here that Brother Branham is 100% in tune with the word, which most people are not. <clears throat> now you notice he interprets his own word by vindicating that word in its season now just hold it we're, we'll get into some of these things I believe that one Noah was the word for that day for his message now after, after that came Moses that's number two Moses could not have taken Noah's word no way he could not build a ship and float them out of Egypt down the Nile River or to the Promised Land and so forth. His message didn't work in Noah's day. That was the part of God's word that was vindicated to be truth by Moses. He didn't have to, nothing was vindicated about Noah. That was vindicated. What vindicated Noah's message? The flood. <clears throat> Took it away. <clears throat> Neither could Jesus have had Moses' word. See, no way. Now that's three. Now watch. Luther could not have maintained the word of the Catholic Church. No way. He had to kill it. Wesley could not maintain Luther's word. Now it died. And the Pentecostal could not take the Methodist word. See, the church is growing. Each age, it's allotted in the scripture here. So God, through the Holy Spirit, reveals his word by manifesting it and vindicating it himself, showing that it's his word being brought to pass in the day that is promised. <clears throat> now, just right here, stop. I don't care. <clears throat> how present and how perfect anything is from God. 
manifested under your nose as though you had a bologna, a sausage, or cucumber grow on your nose. That clear, that evident. You don't know what's going on. In spite of it, unless you listen to what the voice of the sign indicates. <clears throat> now, let me show you right here. I know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I've showed you many times. In the book of Luke, the first chapter, and verse 17. Now, let's go a little back a bit. Verse 15, for John the Baptist shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He's the greatest prophet ever, Jesus said. <clears throat> and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children shall he turn to the Lord their God. Only the elect. Now watch. And John the Baptist shall go before the Lord God in the spirit of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, even the disobedient, those that don't know. Those that don't know. The scripture's there, but they don't understand it. The manifestation's there, but they don't understand it. So what's he doing? <clears throat> Brother Brown told us. It's, a, it's to the understanding, he said. To, to, the, would, the disobedient, those that didn't know, to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. This man had to tell what is going on. And when you turn down what that man says is going down, where the Word of God is revealed in its season, you're finished. Now, just hold that in mind because I'm not finished. I want to bring you something else. <clears throat> now, I'm going to read it if I can possibly read my notes. Not every message is vindicated at the time as is Paul and Brother Branham. Now, in spite of vindication, the fulfilled Word has to be explained or pointed out. It was so with Luther and Wesley, <clears throat> and it was often the fact <clears throat> that we recognize the truth of justification, sanctification, baptism with the Holy Ghost, and now the day restoration. It was pointed out after the word came that the word had been restored, and so has the bride. Every age has a portion, and we can see it is so. Notice, even the four ages that lost so much, both of what they lost and what they had left, was prophesied, and so from Luther, Wesley, and so on, we can, we can come and look back. Now, that's what I want to show you. <clears throat> These men were reformers. They never stood up and said, Now, thus saith the Lord, this is that hour. They couldn't do it. But being the messenger and the mouthpiece for God regardless, they knew they had the truth. And they brought it in such a way that men were swept under <clears throat> the power of the Holy Ghost coming forth in that word. And there's where it lay. Now, we can look back and know that God manifested his word. And don't you know, when he spoke of the messenger in every single age past Paul, right to this hour. Each one of those messengers was the Word of God manifested in human flesh. Now, you can say what you want. That's your privilege. I won't argue with anybody. I'm telling you the truth. When they came to John the Baptist, who are you? He said, I'm, the, he said, I'm Isaiah 41, 2 and 3. He said, <clears throat> manifested in human flesh. They said, what, you've got to be nuts. He said, you're, no, you're nuts. He said, you generation of vipers, you serpent seed. Who warned you? You didn't even come near me. You got no part with me. Get out. <clears throat> he said, the axe that laid to the root of your tree, you're finished. You don't even know it. Well, you talk him burning them down. He burned them down. <laughs> <clears throat> what I'm trying to show you here, every single word of God has come to pass, but it's only after, and I don't care how long after, the manifestation comes. You have to see that that was it. Now, in the end time, that's a different thing entirely. <clears throat> you see? It's to know now and face to face. Now, of course, Brother Branham's criticized even by those who say they believe this message. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. A man say, no, Brother Branham made a mistake. That which is perfect hasn't come. <clears throat> he says he believes. <clears throat> believes what? I don't know what he believes. 
Now he said, now we prophesy in part. No, now we know in part and we prophesy in part. <clears throat> Paul said, we know a certain thing right now and we look down the ages. There's a part now and there's a part future. What about when all the parts have, have come in? Huh? You know something? I don't, I know, I haven't played cards since I was 16 years of age. But I was a rootin' tootin', if I were a rootin' tootin', gunslinging westerner, and I was in a card game with you. Yeah? 52 cards a deck, plus a joker, right? We throw the joker on. If you came up with 53 cards that was five aces, I'd take my gun and blow your brains out. You get what I'm saying? This is a full deck of cards in age number seven, and you can't add one word or take one word from it. <clears throat> now, at the end time, there's a special prophecy. When that which is perfect is come, no more parts. And seven is completion, right? Absolutely. <clears throat> he says what? That which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. <clears throat> in other words, you don't have any more history. You don't even look back. You are now here. And from here you go down or up. Take your choice. Foodies, virgin, all that. <clears throat> You'll follow what I'm trying to tell you here now. I'm basing this upon Brother Branham. Don't you think for one minute that I'm off track because I'm not off track. I'm telling you the truth. Look over here. <clears throat> what we looked at just even tonight and looked at the other day. We look in Revelation uh, 20 and 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Found no place. And I saw the dead great and small stand before God. And you go right on down there, you can see that right here, this is the Word of God that starts its fulfillment and positively ends up. <clears throat> There's no way that you can get away from the Word of Almighty God. Why? Because it is face to face. Back here again, in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, <clears throat> I shouldn't have turned away, but it did. And so we go back, and it says right here, uh, when I was a child, I spake as a child, understood as a child. I thought as a child, when I became a man, I put away childish things. When you become a man, what's that? That's maturation. What's that? Adoption. See? <clears throat> I put away. Now I said, now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Isn't it funny? These guys that run down the Prussian, not, not because I, I wrote anything. They got, they got Jorgensen's book from out west, and of course, when they hit him, they hit me. <clears throat> So they said, well, now this business of presence, there's nothing to the Prussian. Why? We go back to the Old Testament. And he said, and they taught, and, and he said, the word presence here is, you know, when they went down to Egypt and came out, he said, I don't go unless your presence go with me. And he said, that word means face. He tries to take a scripture, the very scripture we use, to prove that we're wrong. He's condemned himself because that's what we're talking about, the personal presence of God face to face. There is. They don't believe that. They don't. There's no way they can. <clears throat> There's no way you can believe what Brother Branham taught and not understand that he declared in 1962, my ministry is to declare that he is here and categorically wound up his ministry. In 1965, actually, on December the 4th, <clears throat> in Yuma, Arizona, when he preached on the rapture, and he said, there's no such thing as a true healing revival unless there's a fresh message. The quick, short message that came out of the West. The rapture tape, if you don't, you listen, be, I would say tonight, we could close the church if you want to, and you go home and just fall on your face and study and do what you want, and just take one tape of the rapture tape. That's the epitomization of the whole thing. <clears throat> no, they're not going to believe that face to face. When I was a child, when was the church a child? Back in the days of infancy of Paul. And he tells you, he said, you're just little kids yet. You should be in manhood, according to Paul. <clears throat> he said, I can't even tell you about Melchizedek. Who came on the scene under the seals and opened it? <clears throat> under the trumpet, see? Now, for I see through glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. But then shall I know even as I am also known. Now, just a minute. 
just a minute. You know something? There's something here that can trick you. If you believe one part of it, you've got to believe the rest of it. Then shall I now know, then shall I know, even as I am known. Is that right? Huh? Okay. <clears throat> what are you going to do with what I'm going to read just now? Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open in the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Because the word of God is quick and powerful, sharpening to edge sword, piercing even dividing asunder soul and spirit and joint and marrow, discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. Do you believe that? Huh? Let's go back and read it again. Then, but then shall I know, even as I am also known. Was it proven by that man, under the Holy Ghost, God himself, that he knew every single person and you couldn't hide if you tried? Then what's the other side of the coin? I know him like he knows me. Well, Brother Bill, I don't know if I can take that. Make him a liar. I've done it all my life. I tell you something, it's not going to change him. He's not going to back down. It's not going to make him less God because a bunch of us idiots got a tongue that we wrapped around our throat. One day he's going to pull our tongue and that'll be, <coughs> we'll choke on our own idiocy. Yeah, isn't this strange? <clears throat> it's strange, yeah. Everybody's, everybody's truthful but God. I, I, I'm telling you this thing from past experience. I don't know what I'm talking about. Humility, that humility is of the devil. It's a stinking pride of self-righteousness that will not credit to God, God's own word. We saw it brought right to pass in this hour. That ought to put us on our knees for every single Sunday by the hour and at home. <clears throat> Jesus said that. He said, if you can't believe me, believe the works that I do. For they testify of who he was. Now, he's talking about the fact of the lobbying of Scripture for every hour. And the allocation of Scripture was, this is Messiah, born of the Virgin. This is that one whose name is Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and so on. That's just the name. He came in his Father's name. Therefore, every single thing that was in that name, <coughs> he uses it. That's why he's mediator and intercessor, by the way. Jesus said, if you can't believe me, believe the works I do. See, Brother Branham is talking about himself also now. For they testify of who he was. If anyone would have known the scripture. Now he came so oddly, so strange, that the people didn't want to believe him. Because he, being a man, mm, yeah, being a man, mm, yeah, William Branham is only a man. Who does he think he is? Well, who do you think you are? You produce something. <clears throat> yeah. Anybody can talk, but talk isn't cheap. They just think it is. One day God's going to make us put our money where our mouth is. And the Laodicean age doesn't have any money. They just think they do. They're wretched, miserable, blind, naked. Oh, they think you're rich and creased and good. Don't like a thing. Oh, we can make it. You can't. They're not going to make it. They're chap. The life has gone out. They're dead. <clears throat> the life has gone to the new message. What new message? William Branham. Yeah. Oh, being a man made himself God. So he was God in form. What's your reason the form of God came right down, took on a form, form of man, too? God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And no man can do these works without, without God be with him. As we know, Nicodemus said, the Sanhedrin believed that. Yet at the same time they believed it, that no man could do those works except God be with him. There was no place in them for the word. They saw something, but it didn't mean anything to them. And when there was nothing there in them to receive what the message was, they condemned the messenger. The Bible said they condemned him. Peter said they condemned him. He said, you condemned the prince of life. <clears throat> but God raised him. <clears throat> oh, there's going to be trouble now. That's why all the world's going to be judged by the man that he raised, even Christ Jesus. See? That was their problem. No place for the word in them. They didn't have a place. Now, if they would have known the word, he said, if you'd known Moses, you'd have known me because Moses wrote of me. If they'd have looked back in the scripture and seen what Messiah was supposed to do, then they would have known him by the vindication that God, through Christ, was reconciling the world himself and bringing to pass all the promises that were of the Messiah that he was to do. <clears throat> 
Now, you notice the Messiah was not doing this by himself. He even said, look, you look at me and say, hey, look at the great works. He said, look, Nicodemus said it right. God is doing it. Oh, but they got jealous. Well, God's with us too. God will do it through us. And Jesus even went so far. He said, if you, your sons, <clears throat> cast out devils by the finger of God, how do you think I'm doing it? Hey, you guys got the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> what do you think I got with what I'm doing? You little tiny finger, little tiny speck. You do something at Pentecost. William Brando comes along. Oh, man. Well, we got something. Now, don't think they didn't have. None of you folk ever were in Oral Roberts meeting, were you? Anybody been to Oral Roberts meeting way back in the beginning? <clears throat> well, I was there. I don't know if you were way back there when I was, when he was in his heyday's prime. He brought his tent to Columbus. <clears throat> so we hot-footed over there to see Oral Roberts. And he has a platform built and a ramp. And the people come on the ramp, and he sits on this little his chair up here because he gets tired when he gets through preaching. And I'm going to tell you, the first little while he took time with everybody, and I never saw him miss one case. They even brought a little boy. He was kind of an eight, nine-year-old kid, uh, long legs and kind of little fat body because he couldn't exercise. He'd had polio or something, and his legs, little, his legs hung down like cooked macaroni sticks. Or I picked him up and prayed, dropped the kid up, boom, he bounds off. <clears throat> Woman comes by, and she's got this brakes neck on. She'd had a cracked neck. And he did a very stupid thing as far as, you know, unless he knew God was really with him. Oh, he said, broken neck, set and so on. He said, fine. He prayed, took him, <coughs> no problem. Right down the line, I don't know how many, perfect. Then he went through the prayer line. He said, this ought to do it. <coughs> like Brother Branham, let's all have a quick prayer line. It was fabulous. But I'm going to tell you, not one had thus saith the Lord. There isn't any vindication in theirs to talk. The only vindication they have say, I know that this gift is of God because the devil doesn't heal. But that could place them outside the pale of safety because they don't listen to the true word. Now they become false shepherds, false prophets, and false teachers. I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. <clears throat> they knew better, but they wouldn't follow. See, that's a terrible, terrible thing. But listen, brother, sister, you've got to face the, the record. Now, Jesus bore record of that word. What word? The word of his hour, based upon way back there in the time of Moses. <clears throat> Moses, the, the Messiah, who was to be, I beg your pardon, <clears throat> the one who was to be Messiah <clears throat> would be a prophet of whom Moses was the picture. And remember, that prophet was not one to whom God appeared in visions and gave dreams and signs and things. It was one to whom God stood face to face with God in him, <clears throat> speaking even apparently. And what was God doing at that hour in Israel? Speaking even apparently in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. This was the great Messiah. They didn't believe Moses. They turned him down, just like Jesus said. Jesus bore record of that word, making that word live for that day. Absolutely. And I believe that's the same thing we live in today, God bearing record of his word by vindicating what he said he would do. Now, William Branham, who are you talking about? Well, if you haven't guessed, but I'm talking about William Branham. <clears throat> you know, people don't want that. No, because they want to be great somebody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a pitiful thing. Why, why can't we just, well, anyway. Now we know that this is the day of salvation. Who said so? <clears throat> Who said this is what I read here from Peter? <clears throat> well, how's anybody going to know? It's veiled in mystery. <clears throat> Jesus demanded a lot of prayer and consecration concerning it in case you missed it. You know, it's just like the time that that Ethiopian eunuch was going down back home and, and he's riding in the desert there mumbling to himself over Isaiah. And God picked up Philip and said, hey, you get in that chariot right now. You better talk to that man. So he joined himself and he said, uh, hey, how are you doing? He said, well, I'm not doing so good. I'm reading this scripture here. And he said, I don't know who he's talking about, himself or somebody else. He said, do you have any insight? He said, I, I, definitely I have insight. And he told him, how'd that man have known? 
See, <clears throat> even the days of Jesus, the disciples said, oh, we believe, we believe. Now you tell plainly, we understand now. And, 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 and here he appears on the road <clears throat> to Emmaus. They don't even know who he is. Boy, that's a fine kettle of fish, isn't it? <clears throat> it's the same thing today. But people don't want to admit, why me, a Christian full of the Holy Ghost, me winning souls and doing this and that, you tell me, I don't know. Boy, boy, you watch it. Look who you're talking to. Hey, man. Oh, oh, oh. You know, I want to tell you, you ever been in my boots? And that man's present looking a hole through you. You wouldn't have to worry about God put looking a hole through you. Or you better really start worrying about God looking a hole through you. <clears throat> now, we know that this is the day of salvation where God is calling men from the world from a life of sin unto a life of service. Well, that's general, too. And in the day that God poured out his spirit from on high, great signs and wonders <clears throat> are to accompany <clears throat> the ministry of this day. Now, if we're going to look at Scripture, from Brother Branham's statement right here, which I've got to do it because <clears throat> I don't want to just pass this off as something that's his history. Now, we know that this is a day of salvation. Now, it is. But where, a special part, <clears throat> the end time, where God is calling men from the world, come out of her, for a life, from a life of sin, denomination in Egypt, Babylon, unto a life of service. <clears throat> Therefore, whatever is in the church, the harlot system is not serving God. <clears throat> now, he's calling us for a service. <clears throat> you know, I'm going to pull a real mean one on you because I'm mean type of guy. You got to forgive me. What do you mean before I read it? Huh? You promise? <clears throat> Let me just show you how far short we fall. <clears throat> You think really I'm after money. I'm not after money. I, I'm not interested. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he can build up a lot of money, have a good time, take care of his wife and kids. It doesn't say that. That he may have to him, he have to give to him that needeth. <clears throat> now, there's a whole sermon in there, which I'm not going to fill in. But what is lacking is what Paul said in the book of Corinthians. The proper understanding of giving, so that you may have to give to every cause. Not every cause is though <clears throat> you're going to get them out of debt or give them millions. But there is no time when God cannot use you to help somebody. It said, as a bee, you're warmed and fed, do something about it. <clears throat> you know why the people are homeless on the streets? They sowed for it. You know why the stock market crashes? They sow for it. You know why sin and disease is in the world? They sow for it. Why are AIDS here? They sowed for it. Now they're trying to say, well, bless God, we're going to keep on sowing. We ain't going to reap. I've got news for you. They're going to reap and reap and reap because it's in the fourth generation <clears throat> when it comes to the full head. <clears throat> it started in the Catholic Church. Now you got one there, two, three, four. The, you see, you're going to add three to four. That's under Pentecost. Rich increased in good chaff. God burns the earth up because of the germs. Brother Branagh said the flames are going to go a thousand miles high and burn every germ. And do you know what they say today? There are germs that are so powerful that only fire can destroy them. <clears throat> and that's going to be a mighty tough fire. Like the somatides I told you about. I thought it was maybe 50 rads. It's 50,000 rads of radiation they can withstand the somatides in your bloodstream. Oh, they're good ones. They're not the bad ones. 
It means if you and I come back in body suited for the lake of fire, we'll live a long, long time in the lake of fire. Let's, hey, brother, sister, let's not kid ourselves. We've got to get serious to the point where this word of God is what Brother Branham says it is. Things that are to be. Things that are. That started in his mind. Here now. You better believe. That Roman candle of the seventh seal is going to carry right on to eternity. <clears throat> not going to miss a trick. Calling men to service. How do you serve God? By serving others. And in the day that God has poured out his spirit from on high, great signs and wonders are to accompany the ministry of this day. <clears throat> now he tells you in the day when these things are happening, that the, the former reign at the time of the latter reign, where you see, have seen the word of God manifested in power, you'll also see it manifested in his revelation. He said there is to be a ministry. <clears throat> the ministry of this hour. This is when the former and latter rain are falling together. <clears throat> now that's the, that's the Pentecostal age. Now at that time, the former rain is falling, comes right in there. Now what about the real latter rain that comes after that? That's where that word, positively the, di the mechanics, I would say have to be dynamized within the carrier, which is the human vessel, the temple of the Holy Ghost, <clears throat> then you watch. Not for great signs and wonders. We're not interested in that. That's fine. We can pray and God will help us, heal the sick, everything else. But the big thing is to be one with the living Word of God, and you can't be that with creeds and dogmas. It's got to be back to the pure Word of God where the bride is a virgin, and she cannot be a virgin if her mind is cluttered with another Jesus, with another spirit, with another gospel. <clears throat> and today they've got all three. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Let's go to Zechariah. How much time we got? Fifteen. Why don't we just quit right here? <clears throat> Why don't we just use this right here? We can make a short recap tomorrow morning, <clears throat> and, uh, and we can go on. Now, you can see this is a very interesting sermon. Very interesting sermon. This is just the third to the last one preached. <clears throat> and then Brother Branham preached a little bit on communion, which is fellowship. And he went off the scene. And, uh, but he's not off the scene too far. Your brother Branham said, if you talk real nice about the people departed, he said, a sweet spirit enters the room. He said, that's the spirit of that person. So I have an idea that brother Branham's around here quite often. At least I certainly hope so. I hope when he comes, he doesn't get angry at me. I, I warned him. I said, brother Branham, I preach too tough. He said, well, somebody's got to tell him. So brother Branham, you know how it is. <laughs> We're here. <clears throat> you see, hey, I'm not trying to commune with him. But he told the truth. I believe he told the truth. I believe it. Yeah. See, when you think of his God's prophets, you're thinking of a mighty high order. <clears throat> Represented God. We also represent God as ambassadors and legates, sure, but not like that. No, 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 no. We're not the, we're not the seed carrier. The prophet was a word carrier. We, we, we take and help him sow the seed. <clears throat> okay, what are we going to read from tonight? Because we have to read... Uh, foot washing and communion. <clears throat> and uh, let's just bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and grace you've given us. Time now, Lord, to change the order of the service and go into that part, Father, which is good for us. And if we are here, foot washing and communion, which is marvelous, Lord. We appreciate it so much. We pray, Lord, as we read a little bit of Scripture, you'll anoint us to the end that we see more of the divine revelation and truth, <clears throat> which is in your word. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Now, the uh, 69th Psalm, <clears throat> we won't read it all, but there's a... Um, A thought in here concerning Christ where David is saying, Save me, O God, for the waters are come into my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I'm coming to the deep waters where the floods overflow me. I'm weary of my crying. My throat is dried, mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored <clears throat> that which I took not away. 
O oh God, thou knowest my foolishness, my sins are not hid from thee. See, all in through here you find an interweaving of this, the Spirit of Christ uh, identifying with David, the prophet king, <clears throat> who is in great depths of problems because of what he did, and yet the Spirit of Christ coming through, telling us, moving through David and some of the experiences there, he said, they would destroy me. They hate me without a cause. Mine enemies wrongfully are mighty. I restored that which I took not away. Uh, David could be saying that in a very minor key, but there's no way he could say that uh, he hadn't done wrongfully and he hadn't taken that which wasn't his. He did. He took Bathsheba. <clears throat> so you see the spirit of Christ in here all the way through. He said, O oh God, thou knowest, no, that's sixth verse, let, that, let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel, because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger to my brethren, alien unto my mother's children. For the zeal of thine house has eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. So you can see coming through again the, <clears throat> the, the life of Christ, his, his, the, 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 uh, the reproach that he bore, hated without a cause, only having done good. And uh, what, what, what is doing it? The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Now what was wrong with Israel? Zeal without knowledge. <clears throat> they did not have a knowledge of the true God. Now, we'll be, we'll be accused of being zealots, fanatics, and everything under high heaven. We're going to be, we're gonna be uh, well, you know, cults and everything else. Oh, those guys are just crazy. But you see, <clears throat> they don't understand that our zeal is a zeal from God against the zeal of their organizations. Israel had a zeal without knowledge. We have a zeal because of knowledge. See, their zeal is to keep what they got. <clears throat> I don't understand. You, you know, when you begin to figure that this thing started way back in Rome hundreds and hundreds of years ago, almost 2,000 years ago, you think, my heavens, what are they trying to perpetuate? Can't they see history? Can't they understand? What do they think anyway? Where are they coming from? Insanity. And you know what? This word of God is responsible for their insanity. That is the depth of it. <clears throat> because they got to face it. And it won't do it though. No. The, for the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. Jesus said, If I had not done the works no other men did, they had not sinned, but now they've both seen and hated both me and my father. And, and Israel said, well, uh, are we blind? He said, if you had not said you could see, if you were blind, your sin would not remain. But now that you say, aha, we see, we've got light, don't you talk to us, your sin remaineth. How can anybody claim the blood of Jesus Christ and sins forgiven when they come against the word? You tell me. <clears throat> you know, I, I get overpowered with, uh, with these things that Brother Brown has pointed out. All you got to do is just listen to the man and you go all the way through the scripture. <clears throat> you can see exactly why things are the way they are. Well, I tell you what, that lets us know we're on the right track. We're on the inside track. And by the grace of God, we're going to make it. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. What good did it do? I made sackcloth of my garment. It became a proverb to them. They that sit in the gate speak against me. I was the song of the drunkards. Huh? What about all these singers in America today making fun of Jesus? <clears throat> what do you think about those who got a Trinitarian God and sing these, these uh, songs to, to, uh, to, the, to rock beat, hard rock and everything else? And the Christians condone it, laud them by saying, well, hey, we'll, we'll, the kids love this rock and roll. It's purely of the devil. It's been proven it's of the devil. And say, well, we'll make Christian words to it. Great. You see, where, where are the people? <clears throat> but as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time. Ha, ha. God always answered the right time. O God, the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. 
Deliver me out of the mire. Let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me out of the deep waters. Now remember, Brother Brandon said the church <clears throat> has to go through this too. The bride was buried in the fourth age, started to come forth. But every time there's a persecution. Will they close the doors of our church? Yes, they had better. There's something wrong somewhere. Will there be a pressure come down to squeeze? Well, he said so. <clears throat> I'm not going to argue. <clears throat> What's going to prepare us for it? Nothing but the Word. Nothing else, because there's where the Holy Spirit resides. There's where the strength is. So let it come. <clears throat> when we take communion, we show forth His death. We therefore show forth our death. Yep. But at the same time, we know the one that died rose again and brought forth the life, which is in the wine. Yeah. So though we may go through trial, suffering, and persecution, <clears throat> that's the order of the hour. We've been through it. We'll be through more of it. And whatever comes, life, death, persecution, famine, sword, nakedness, peril, nothing will separate us from the love of God, and we'll know it, just like Paul, I believe. But the communion shows these things that we agree. Because <clears throat> that's a communion. It's an agreement. We're talking together. One that rapped at the door. Said, we'll open the door. Come on in, talk. So we have communion tonight. <clears throat> foot washing. And we believe that this means something to us. This adds to us. It's a blessing. It's a great thing to be able to do it amongst Christian brethren. It's so wonderful to have you all here to fellowship with you around the Word, around the table, and know we're all marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. Marching upward. Yeah, marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God, <clears throat> being a part of it. What would be any favor to march up there and find the gates were closed? That's not the way it is. Those that march up there have open, they have the gates open. Yeah. Yeah, even the foolish virgin can come in and go on out come into the city. And the beautiful to think, he stands back and he said, this is the people you didn't like, but this is my bride. You come on now. And you admit it. You're going to fall right down here, worship me, and as you do, you're going to admit her. Yeah, they which were a people are now a people. Not a people, they're now people. Priests and kings unto God. All these things are ours, brother, sister. All of them are ours. And brother Branham said, the curse of this hour would be people becoming careless. And he feared deeply that we'd be taken away with the things of the world, this thing and that thing, instead of carried along with the Word of God. How sad that people have this opportunity and do not avail themselves of it. Let's rise at this particular time. <clears throat> the brethren come forward, and we'll pray over the emblems. And... Uh, you know foot washing the men out there, but there's also room back here for men, about maybe uh, 10 men, so don't, you can go back here in this room. I'll open the door for you. <clears throat> that means foot washing is easier and simpler. The women have a larger quarters, but they'll be well taken. Heavenly Father, as we look to you now, we ask you to anoint this time of fellowship together, and especially, Lord, the consecration of this bread and the taking of the wine before you, Lord, in a state of complete fellowship with you and with each other, Lord. Uh, no longer looking, Father, at a day of wrath and looking at ourselves as though we're unclean, but knowing, Lord, you have cleansed us and you've declared by your word, you the judge, that you're the perfect little righteous bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. You didn't do it in the first place. You were tricked into it. It all falls back upon Satan who did it all. Father, we thank you for that. It gives us great encouragement to partake of the emblems knowing, Lord, that you've cleansed us. And if you've cleansed us, who dare say we are not clean? How dare we call that unclean or unsanctified, which you've cleansed and sanctified? Lord, we lift our hearts to you in adoration and praise that this is so, and fellowship together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat>